so what we saw last uh, cyclic ft module ft question by the ideal generated by t cube minus 3t square plus 2t is isomorphic to the rt module rt upon question by upon the ideal generated by t like this and such a thing we have learned while studying polynomials rings so you can compare this with chinese remainder theorem okay so i'll uh, proceed now this this is structure theorem of uh, this the previous discussion was mainly on structure theorem of finitely generated ft module and now we are going to apply this theory to linear algebra operators uh, operator on a finite dimensional vector space so the theory of structure of finitely generated ft module may be applied to study <coughs> linear operators on finite dimensional vector spaces over any field. Okay, the Q observation that allows us to proceed is that if we are given a, a linear operator on the vector space V, I mean, in this a key idea will work even if V is in finite dimensional. So, over a field F, we can use capital T, the operator, to make V, v into a FT module, a module sorry, over the ring FT. That is the main point, using the following action. Obvious section is what? The obvious section is that let Ft is any polynomial a n t n like this a one t plus a naught. Then, what is the action of this polynomial on any vector? Is a n apply t n on v plus a n minus one apply t n minus one. That means you apply n, mi n minus one times repeatedly, okay? Composition of t, n minus time, one. In the first one, composition of t with itself, n times, then apply on t. A1 tv plus a naught identity map. So when I apply identity map on v, I'll have just v. So which can be written in short as ft applied on v. Where this notation ft in linear algebra, we use this notation several times that this is a n t n like this a 1 t plus a naught the identity map, the identity operator.
so in particular so t acts on v sorry t how if i want to multiply to v what is the vector i am going to get it is tv applied operator capital t on v okay so we have an action of small t on any vector Conversely, if V is an FT module, then uh, we have a linear operator. Then define t from v to v students can suggest me how i am going to define what is that operator from sorry that applied on any vector v what should be the image the reverse process i am doing i have an ft module so f it is a, a vector space and f, there is an action of ft that means every polynomial i know how to multiply to every vector Okay, so then I'll declare the operator to be that any vector mm -hmm. is, I'll multiply simply t to v. The same thing. Is it okay? So yes, it sir. is. It is not difficult now to verify that t is a linear operator. Okay, linear transformation or linear operator. I mean, it follows from that definition. So, linear operator on an vector space, vector space over F, and FT module are equivalent concepts is it fine if a vector space over f is given and a linear operator along with a linear operator on the vector space then we know that it has got a ft module structure and if we are given an ft module then in particular it is a f vector space how will i get that I will restrict the action of FT because I know how to multiply any polynomial to a vector. Therefore, in particular, I know how to multiply a constant polynomial. That means elements of F to a vector. So therefore, I have an action of F on V. So therefore, V is a vector space. And it, that means I am saying FT module is a vector space over F. And the action of T is used to define the operator okay define an operator so these two concepts are equivalent so this equivalence we are, we are going to use now need and also recall yes please uh, do we also need finite dimensionality of vector space because we where, finite, where do we need finite dimensionality uh, for the vector space we are saying yes yes where do i need like finite dimensionality do we need that's what my I'm asking. Because, that's, that's uh, we are, right now we are not using any finite dimensionality, but we need later when we are going to use it. You know, we want to apply the theory. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Because okay. we are going to use what presentation. If we have a finite dimensional FT module, then I have a present we have a presentation matrix. Mm -hmm. So if we have a finite dimensional vector space, then we have a uh, finite rank FT module. Okay, mm -hmm. but where this equivalence is concerned, I don't feel any need of writing V to be finite dimensional. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, recall uh, FT is an infinite dimensional vector space that you might have already observed, vector space. Tell me a basis 
what is a basis example of a basis one t t square like this all powers of t is an example of a basis is a basis so ft can be identified to the space z of f spaces sorry z of f sorry f f sequence sequence over f sequences a not a1 like this infinitely many where this ai is zero except for finitely many except for finitely many i see i have a sequence by sequence i mean a map from n union zero because i am starting with zero n union zero to f okay finitely many i moreover multiplication by t is a map from ft to ft right multiplication by t mt multiplication by t is a linear f linear transformation from ft to ft this corresponds to the right shift operator right shift operator see ft is a ft module right and then we have a vector space ft with an operator what is the operator right shift operator where a not a1 this is mapped to first right i want to shift right so i'll put a zero first and then a not a1 like this is it okay is it okay yes, what yes, so this is an example of an infinite dimensional vector space right <clears throat> thus the right shift operator on the space z corresponds to the free ft module Sorry. what is the ft module ft itself of rank 1 ft is of rank 1 right so so this is a very you know first example okay suppose f is any field i am just starting another thing that f is a field v is a n dimensional now finite dimension i am assuming finite dimensionality f vector space suppose t from v to v is a linear operator suppose okay so this v is an ft module uh since v is finite dimensional uh v is finitely generated ft module with no free uh there is no free part Free FT 
uh, component sub ft sub module is it fine is it okay this is this finite dimensionality assumption is helping me to conclude that ft uh, just now we have seen that ft itself is a the rank one is already an infinite dimensional vector space but v is finite dimensional so therefore i cannot write v as w plus ftn i cannot write so this free part is not there so whatever i have it is finitely generated and that is the advantage now uh, so yeah, can you please explain it again i am not able yes. to get yes yes sure so what we learned finitely generated finitely generated a billion a billion group what we had that we have some c d1 c d2 kind of thing and in fact we said that for uniqueness you assume that di divides di plus 1 and along with one pre compart right z power some r r can be zero or positive right so yes. yeah so finite abelian group thing i have replaced by ft module now sorry not f module ft module am i right so here we are saying that uh the same theory i just you know uh, in the lecture 7 with what we said that we can write as a product of uh, sum of cyclic sub modules am i right yes sir yeah so and there may be some if i do not know about dimension there may be some ft power r so what was the notation i used did i write c d1 t did i write if you allow me to write notation c d1 t for the cyclic sub module of the given ft module and there we said that for uniqueness dit divides di plus 1t and there may be something thing like this but in then that ft module as a f vector space will be infinite dimensional am i right because yes, if, r, if r is positive then ft r is an infinite dimensional vector space so what we are saying yeah. that this r is must be zero Okay, okay. R yes, equal to zero if f dim f dimension of v over f is finite. Okay, that's all. Yeah. So by the structure theorem. what we have v is isomorphic to or equal to actually so these the these are subspaces sub modules ft sub modules w1 w2 w k where wi is a cyclic uh, rft sub module of v and what we know then we know that this each wi is isomorphic to can you again recall and tell me is wi should be isomorphic to ft quotient by dit monic polynomial right monic polynomial where fit is a monic polynomial monic polynomial we get because uh, ft is a i mean i it is generated by one element the relation is singleton generated by one element because it ft is a pit
now what we do next choose a basis say bi for wi over f see it is a ft module that is fine but it is a f vector space also every ft module is a f vector space so i can think of a basis now so let us let bi be a basis of wi over f then with respect to is it fine that w y is a what do, when we have something like this so action of t w y is closed under the action of t because it is an ft module so therefore what is happening w y is a invariant subspace t invariant subspace okay so okay maybe i write in red it in this remark that wi is a t invariant subspace that is t of wi is inside wi okay is it fine yes because sir. yeah action of t capital t and multiplication by small t on any vector is the same thing and we have a theory over a p over ft so we are applying that theory all right so so then with respect to the basis b what is that basis obtained by taking the disjoint union b1 b2 b k the matrix of t has a block form maybe i write in the next page a1 a2 like this ak see so empty empty blocks are zero blocks so a1 a2 ak are appearing diagonally well and there is no zero row now okay because there is no free part ai is a square matrix of size what is the size of the matrix it is the dimension of wi as a vector space over f and which is nothing but the number of elements in bi with entries from a so f entries from f <clears throat> not ft s okay so now we now slightly put a microscope and now we examine the restriction of t to an invariant subspace to wi for a fixed i so for an individual invariant subspace let us see how t acts all right suppose w is a cyclic ft module generated by some vector w not then this w we know is isomorphic to ft quotient by some monic polynomial small ft where this ft is monic so i i'll start with t power some n plus n minus 1 t power n minus 1 like this a1 t a not belonging to ft that means coefficients are coming from a not and this isomorphism and 
this isomorphism height do I get? W naught, where will I send to? For the isomorphism, one obvious choice is I'll send it to one. You see, one T T squared they generate, right? Induces the isomorphism. In fact, what we know, <coughs> in fact, one T T power N minus one is a basis of, I mean, strictly speaking, I should put a bar here of FT upon uh, capital FT upon the ideal generated by small FT. And hence, W naught, T W naught, T power N minus one W naught. I know how to multiply T with any vector because W is a FT module. So I am multiplying small t to uh, W naught, then small t to T W naught, that means T squared naught and so on. So these are actually corresponding elements in W, okay, I know a basis here, I am just transferring to W. It's by taking its image under the isomorphism. So this is an ordered basis, basis of W as an F vector space. Okay, why am I every time writing F and FT? Because you know there is a high chance of uh, confusion. So therefore, whenever as I am considering as what I am here, I considering it as a vector space over F and writing a basis. Okay, <clears throat> by definition, the linear operator. T from W to W is given by, please recall, T of small W is what? A, a action of small T on W. <clears throat> then set small WJ to be TJ applied on W naught, which is same thing as, same thing as, T power J applied on W, multiply to W naught. Same thing what I have written here. Okay, these are renamed. T W naught is written as W1. So I have W naught, W1, W N minus. With this notation, so uh, W naught, W1, W N minus one is a basis of W. So I'm assuming that N is a dimension of W, okay. <clears throat> so then observe that T takes W naught to W1. T takes W1 to W2. It's shifting. T takes W n minus two to W n minus one. Where it, will it take T W n minus one to? Okay, so this we, we are asking because there is no W n here. So what we know, Tn W naught, An minus one, Tn minus one, W naught, like this, uh, A naught, W naught, which is Ft, so this F, F capital T applied on W naught. What is it equal to? Same thing as small ft multiplied to f w naught. What is it equal to? What is small ft bar actually, right? Strictly speaking, I should say small ft bar inside here. So it is equal to zero. Is it fine? Ft acts trivially on w naught. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Yeah. 
so yes. this is nothing but if you like you can think this as uh yeah this is fine so i'll write this is equal to zero this is for understanding so i will just say that maybe in a different color that ft bar multiplied to one is zero is it fine in here if i look in this i consider image of w not is one so ft bar is zero bar so multiply zero to one is you get zero okay so therefore uh, what is this i had to feel this is t n w not and then t n w not is obtained from this equality so you see carefully t n w not t n w not is minus minus a not w not a1 uh, w1 an uh, minus 1 w and my a n minus 1 w n minus 1 sorry yeah n minus this is according to our notation this so now we are in a position to write down the matrix of t the matrix of t with respect to the basis w not w1 w n minus 1 is please tell me now what is the first column by seeing this one and you know the order of the order of the basis w not w1 etc so what is the first column see this one and tell me the first column for the matrix representation of t is it zero so anybody one. One, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Zero. right then i can do this till last but one column am i right till the last but one column yes, i can zero zero now one i'll have two zero because now i have shifted okay zero 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 one zero what is the last column last column i have here also yeah this one will tell me the last column t on uh, wn minus 1 is given like this and therefore it is minus a not minus a1 minus a2 minus n minus 1 sorry a n minus two minus a n minus one. Okay. Do you know any name of this matrix? Companion matrix. Companion matrix. Whose companion matrix? Matrix of F T. Is it fine? It is the comp companion matrix of F T. The characteristic polynomial of uh, this matrix is, is F T. All right. So this is fine. <coughs> so we have got uh, when we look the action of t on uh, a, an irreducible oh, sorry not irreducible on a cyclic fp sub module then t can be described using a companion matrix of a polynomial right namely polynomial of relation cyclic module has a unique relation i mean is generated by one relation Rela right so that relation gives me a matrix and that relation is a polynomial and its companion matrix actually companion matrix is uh, describes 
the action of T. Theorem. Let T be a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space V over a field F. There is a basis of V such that okay maybe a basis of V with respect to which the matrix of T is made up of block blocks of the type written diagonally okay. written above diagonally this written above so this kind of matrices are often called rational canonical form, but there is a slightly strict definition. So still, I just make this definition according to this book. Uh, this form for the matrix of a linear operator is called a rational canonical form. We will slightly restrict this one after some time. But before this, I would like to you know, give the example from the book and then I'll come to the uh, another slightly you know, re more restricted definition. Example, take <coughs> f equal to r. Suppose t cube minus 1. Uh, is the characteristic polynomial of T from R cube to R cube. So here, uh, T cube minus one is T minus one. I can factorize like this into irreducible factors. And they are all monic. So uh, R cube here, this space as an FT module is isomor is I am thinking as an RT module, and then this is FT upon T cube minus one, and which is you can FT upon T minus one sum with FT with T square plus T plus one. But if you, for f equal to c, we further we can do what? c cube is not just c t over t cube minus one. It is uh, isomorphic to c t t minus one direct sum c t t square plus t plus one and c t. You can actually write in linear form and roots are omega one omega omega square. So we can write in this form. Excuse me. T minus omega square. I hope this is okay. Maybe I write like here below. <sighs> So the rational canonical form of T is either 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Maybe I just put this extra this over seating. 
because I was discussing about R. Yeah. So zero one. So zero. Then the last column. Can I have to write the uh, companion matrix for T T Q minus one? So this is the companion matrix. But then one can think of this in this fashion. Here I'll have two blocks. One block is one by one, corresponding to the first component. And so for second component, I'll write zero, one. And the companion, I mean, companion matrix for t square plus t plus one, I, I'm, I have to write, which is uh, here, I'll put minus one, minus one. This is one. And for uh, c, f equal to c, another possibility of companion matrix, not companion, uh, what I should say, uh, rational canonical form. Is one zero 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 omega zero 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 omega square. So uh, why do I need to talk about uh, a restricted definition? Let us go for it. Now we are going uh, slightly, which is not discussed in this book, but since we are making this and already you know people are interested to understand rational canonical form, so I write a definition. So this is. Uh, you know, slightly beyond uh, and more restricted definition. A rational canonical form is a matrix R that is the direct sum. Direct sum means diagonally putting in the in blocks. Okay of companion matrices as what companion matrix of f1 direct sum companion matrix of f2 companion matrix of fk i hope this is okay that means i mean so far we are writing like this that this matrix is Diagonally, CF1, CF2, CF1 is a matrix, namely the companion matrix of F1. So these are the blocks, diagonal blocks. And what are the not field? They are all zero blocks. Okay. All right, so uh, here in this definition, we restrict that fi t divides fi plus one t for i one to two minus one. Students can comment now here why I need this restriction. What is the advantage if I give this put this restriction on uh, the definition of rational canonical form? Anybody would like to comment? Unique. Yes, somewhat uniqueness. And then you, you can make certain def, uh, statements about the matrix. That is right, uniqueness. If A, maybe in red only I'll write because it is also part. If R is, okay, A is similar, to A sum matrix is similar to this matrix CF1, CF2, CFK. Then we say that the invariant factors of A are F1, T. F two T some terminology, F K T. So these polynomials in this order were such that such that we continue to have this F I T divides F I plus one T. Okay, so these are invariant factors. 
and with this definition with this definition what we get we have a remark that uh, a is similar to b if and only if they have can you complete the same rational canonical form in particular every square matrix has a unique rational canonical form okay please ask if you have any questions anybody would like to ask a question no, yeah so this this assumption see if, since the beginning we are talking about di dividing di plus 1 now that di's have become, become matrices because integers are replaced by polynomials which coefficients from a field then now we have we are talking about uh, monic polynomials and we are putting a condition like this right and then we have a restricted definition of rational canonical form restricted because you know which one is the correct definition i do not know maybe both are you know in really correct uh, you know convention but for uniqueness kind of statement and this kind of statement are well known so for which we need to restrict like this but in this book uh, it is written that the same matrix has got two different rational canonical forms here so maybe you know this is a less restricted definition <clears throat> okay so uh, yeah a little bit of time is there maybe i i'll generally discuss a question from the book which is okay maybe uh, yeah other questions which are related to this maybe i'll put one or two questions for the tutorial which you can look into so immediately maybe you know maybe slightly unrelated i just picked the book and saw the if you couple of last questions from the book is it okay is it okay professor uh, yeah, 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 it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I do not know whether they have already discussed. These are already discussed in some context. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is question ten. According to this, the book I am having, ten A in this section, prove that the multiplicative group Q cross. That means non-zero rational numbers under multiplication is isomorphic to uh, direct sum z2 and a free abelian group. Oh, sorry, z not z and some <coughs> a where a <coughs> Uh, I should is a free abelian group with countably many generators. Is the question clear? I am not asking a solution. I am just asking whether the question is okay. Students, please let me know. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now you just visualize what is the group in the left hand side. Every element is P by Q, right? And maybe you can assume that P and Q are co prime. Okay. So anybody would like to comment, students? Maybe I uh, split in yes. P by Q and minus P by Q. Okay. Okay, good. That is right. There can be a positive and negative. That is right. 
So it is in fact, I can have Q already, uh, I can have an extra condition that P, Q are positive. This is a subgroup of Q cross. This is a subgroup of Q cross. Yeah, so can you talk about, actually this group is uh, isomorphic to A. Now, any comments? So what we do? X belonging to Q, uh, not Q, or maybe A. Uh, not A also, let me, let us call this, this one, name this one as, give name as name, maybe B. It is equal to B, other one is isomorphic to A. Okay, so therefore I did not take it. So if I have an element say, A belonging to B, or B belonging to B, B belonging to B. Okay, so what can I say? Prime factorization, what will I get? Do I have prime factorization inside Q? Can I write it as pi i equal to one to infinity r i, where p one equal to two, p two equal to three. What is p p three equal to five. four five five p four I am writing the prime numbers, right? Pi is the ith prime. This is the idea, am I right? And this ri, any integer, it can be negative power, am I right? So where will you send B2? Where will I send B2 inside A? Sorry, uh, maybe I should write in a different way. I have to define a map from B to A. A is described here, you see. Yeah, so where will I send B to? R1, R2, R3, R4. Like this? Yes. Well, okay. finite number of ri is at dot zero. So linear I combination of ri, we like write like this, linear combination of ri, then ei. So infinitely ei are there now, am I right? And this sum is finite or infinite? This sum is finite or infinite sum? Finite. Finite. Yeah, this I can imagine as, ZT, am I right? I can yes. imagine like ZT, yes. one corresponds to E1, T corresponds to E2, T to the power K corresponds to EK plus one. Am I right? Many ways of thinking. Okay. So is it now possible to verify that this is an isomorphism? Do you see that this is okay? To, is it okay for you to verify? When I multiply say B with B prime, what am I going to get? It's image or what is B into B prime? Product of PI RI plus RI prime, am I right? Multiplication index gets multiplied. Is it fine? And therefore its image is simply addition here. Etc. Is it fine? And conversely, every element I have here, such as every element here is a finite linear combination of T powers of T, sorry, finite linear combination, Z linear combination of powers of T, and therefore I'll have an element like B. So this is an isomorphism. So that B part is an is isomorphic to this ZT. So A is ZT, this is my ZA. And how to get Z2? 
now someone can comment what is z2 why i should write z2 q cross is isomorphic to z2 direct sum with zt so why this should come because of that minus one am i right so if i have a b yes. here if it i have a b here one comma one one or minus sign b one comma, comma b, sign of b that's right sign of b okay. comma the same map if you call it phi then R this is phi b phi b i'm just giving a name here phi then i can define sign is it fine will you now verify that sign is also a homomorphism in fact an isomorphism you see if i multiply b with b prime sign also gets is it fine yes sign b b prime if both are negative it becomes positive and therefore it is modulo it is like adding modulo 2 minus 1 okay so with this notation this c2 z2 is a good not a good notation i'll write multiplicative notation okay or if you want z2 what i should write this b upon b prime is not good i'll write zero if b is positive i write one if b is negative is it fine 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 yes sir yeah so i write b tilde here and i'll define what is b tilde b tilde equal to zero if b positive one if b negative is it fine so one negative negative will be give me positive when i multiply so one plus one becomes zero. Is it fine? Modulo two. Okay. So this is how we can understand this one because this is beyond finitely generated. So this is infinitely generated and this is an example. So there are more questions you can discuss. Maybe if in tutorial time is there, we can discuss. I'll write one more question before that. So I can co conclude here, Professor Satya, is it okay? Yes, can I yes, Yes, yes. Uh, you want to give one question now or uh, later? I can give now. Fine. Uh, I can uh, give then because they can. This can be discussed. Yeah. Right. Uh, question two. Show that Q plus it means rational numbers under addition is not a direct sum. of two proper subgroups. So what we are saying that uh, A and B subgroups of Q, Q plus and Q plus equal to A direct sum B. Direct sum means what? Any element of Q plus is a uh, sum of elements coming from A and B, but and uh, in a unique way, or it is equivalent to say the but intersection of A and B is the zero group. So this is not possible. This is this thing is false. Okay, for non-trivial. Okay, I mean okay. I say that is true for A equal to zero or b equal to zero. One of them has to be zero. That means the other one will be q whole of q plus. So no proper, to, proper subgroups are there whose direct sum is q plus, okay? Whose sum is q plus and intersection is zero, is, okay? So it's not possible. So is the question clear? Is the question okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, please think on this one. Then you can, you know, tutorial time, you can raise this one. It can be discussed. Okay. I'll also put some this one there. Thank you. So can I there, now? Yes, please. Please ask. Comment. If please. there exist two non-zero elements from yes. A and B, then the multiplication is yes, yes, good. Yes, that's right. 
multiplication will go to both. Yes. That's what you are saying? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Correct. Other people also think what you are saying, it will work. And there is one more question in the book, the last question. So that the quotient group Q plus upon Z plus is not a direct sum of cyclic groups. So you can look at that also, if you like. I am not writing that one because we have limited time, but you can see that one also. Similar idea may, be, may work. Okay, okay then I'll conclude here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So thank you all the students for patiently listening and asking questions. And it is really helpful when you ask questions. And I thank the organizers for inviting me to, you know, to speak here because when we speak and then we prepare and for that we prepare and as a result, we refresh our, you know, ideas. And this is very helpful. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everyone. And I conclude here.